Selected Writings and Speeches of Marcus Garvey, an appeal to the conscience of the black race to see itself. The Negro will have to build his own government, industry, art, science, literature, and culture before the world will stop to consider him. To Tombs Prison, New York City, August 14th, 1923. It is said to be a hard and difficult task to organize and keep together large numbers of the Negro race for the common good. Many have tried to congregate us, but have failed. The reason being that our characteristics are such as to keep us more apart than together. The evil of internal division is wrecking our existence as a people, and if we do not seriously and quickly move in a direction of readjustment, it simply means that our doom becomes eminently conclusive. For years, the Universal Negro Improvement Association has been working for the unification of our race, but not on domestic national lines only, but universally. The success which we have met in the course of our effort is rather encouraging, considering the time consumed and the environment surrounding the object of our concern. It seems that the whole world of sentiment is against the Negro and the difficulty of our generation is to extricate ourselves from the prejudice that hides itself beneath as well as above the action of an international environment. Prejudice is conditional on many reasons, and it is apparent that the Negro supplies consciously or unconsciously all the reasons by which the world seems to ignore and avoid him. No one cares for a leper, for lepers are infectious persons, and all are afraid of the disease. So, because the Negro keeps himself poor, helpless, and undemonstrative, it is natural that no one wants to be of him or with him. Progress is the attraction that moves humanity and to whatever people or race this modern virtue attaches itself, there will you find the splendor of pride and self-esteem that will never fail to win the respect and admiration of all. It is the progress of the Anglo-Saxon that singles them out for the respects of the world. When a race had no progress or achievement to its credit, then like all in other inferior peoples, they paid the price in slavery, bondage, as well as through prejudice. We cannot forget the time when even the ancient Britain was regarded as being too dull to make a good Roman slave, yet today the influence of that race rules the world. It is the industrial and commercial progress of America that causes Europe and the rest of the world to think appreciatively of the Anglo-American race. It is not because 110 million people live in the United States that the world is attracted to the Republic with so much reverence and respect. A reverence and respect not shown to India with its 300 millions or to China with its 400 millions. Progress of and among any people will advance them in the respect and appreciation of the rest of their fellows. It is such a progress that the Negro must attach to himself if he is to rise above the prejudice of the world. The reliance of our race upon the progress and achievements of others for consideration and sympathy, justice and rights is like a dependence upon a broken stick, resting upon which will eventually consign you to the ground. The Universal Negro Improvement Association teaches our race self-help and self-reliance, not only in one essential, but in all those things that contribute to the human happiness and well-being. The disposition of the many to depend upon the other races for a kindly and sympathetic consideration of their needs without making the effort to do for themselves has the race standing disgrace by which we have been judged and through which we have created the strongest prejudice against ourselves. There is no force like success. And that is why the individual makes all efforts to surround himself throughout life with the evidence of it. As of the individual, so should it be of the race and nation. The glittering success of Rockefeller makes him a power in the American nation. The success of Henry Ford suggests as an object of universal respect, but no one cares about the bum or hobo who is Rockefeller's or Ford's neighbor. So also in a world attracted by the glittering success of races and nations and pays absolutely no attention to the bum or hobo race that lingers by the wayside. The Negro must be up and doing if he will break down the prejudice of the rest of the world. Prayer alone is not going to improve our condition, nor the policy of watchful waiting. We must strike out for ourselves in the course of material achievement and by our own effort and energy present to the world those forces by which the progress of man is judged. The Negro needs a nation and a country of his own where he can best show evidence of his own ability in the art of human progress. Scattered as an unmixed and unrecognized part of an alien nations and civilization is but to demonstrate his imbecility and points him out as an unworthy derelict, fit neither for the society of Greek, Jew, nor Gentile. It is unfortunate that we should so drift apart 
as a race and not see that we are but perpetrating our own sorrow and disgrace and failing to appreciate the first great requisite of all peoples, organization. Organizing an organization is a great power in directing the affairs of a race or nation toward a given goal. To properly develop the desires that are uppermost, you must first concentrate through some system of method, and there is none better than organization. Hence, the Universal Negro Improvement Association appeals to each and every Negro to throw in his lot with those of us who, through organization, are working for the universal emancipation of our race and the redemption of our com common country, Africa. No Negro, let him be American, European, West Indian, or African, shall be truly respected until the race as a whole has emancipated itself through self-achievement and progress from universal prejudice. The Negro will have to build his own government, industry, art, science, literature, and culture before the world will stop to consider him. Until then, we are but wards of a superior race and civilization and the outcasts of a standard social system. The race needs workers at this time, not plagiarists, copyists, and mere imitators, but men and women who are able to create, to organize and improve, and thus make an independent racial contribution to the world and civilization. The unfortunate thing about us is that we take the monkey apings of our so-called leading men for progress. There is no progress in Negroes aping white people and telling us that they represent the best in the race. For in respect to any dressed monkey would represent the best of its species, irrespective of the creative matter of the monkey instinct. The best in race is not reflected through or by the actions of its apes, but by its ability to create of it and by itself. It is such a creation that the Universal Negro Improvement Association seeks. Let us not try to be the best of worst of others, but let us make the effort to be the best of ourselves. Our own racial critics criticize us as dreamers and fanatics and call us benighted and ignorant because they lack racial backbone. They're unable to see themselves creators of their own needs. The slave instinct has not yet departed from them. They still believe that they can only live or exist through the good graces of their masters. The good slaves have not yet thrown off their shackles. Thus to them, the Universal Negro Improvement Association is an impossibility. It is a slave spirit of dependence that causes our so-called leading men, apes, to seek the shelter, leadership, protection, and patronage of the master in the organization and so-called advancement work. It is a spirit of feeling secured as good servants of the master rather than as independents why our modern Uncle Toms take pride in laboring under alien leadership and becoming surprised at the audacity of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and proclaiming for racial liberty and independence. But the world of white and other men deep down in their hearts have much more respect for those of us who work for our racial salvation under the banner of the Universal Negro Improvement Association than they could ever have in all eternity for a group of helpless apes and beggars who make a monopoly of undermining their own race and belittling themselves in the eyes of self-respecting people by being good boys rather than able men. Surely, there can be no good will between apes, seasoned beggars, and independent-minded Negroes who will at least make an effort to do for themselves. Surely, the dependents and wards, and may I not say racial imbeciles, will rave against and plan a destruction of movements like the Universal Negro Improvement Association that expose them to be the liberal white minds of the world as not being representative of the best in the Negro, but, to the contrary, the worst. The best of a race does not live on the patronage and philanthropy of others, but makes an effort to do for itself. The best of the great white race doesn't fawn before and beg black, brown, and yellow men. They go out and create for themselves and thus demonstrate the fitness of the race to survive. And so the white race of America and the world will be informed that the best in the Negro race is not the class of beggars who send out to be the race's piteous appeals annually for donations to maintain their coterie. But the groups within us that are honestly striving to do for themselves with the voluntary help and appreciation of the class of the other races that is reasonable, just and liberal enough to give to each and every one a fair chance in the promotion of these ideas that tend to be greater human progress and human love. The work of the Universal Negro Improvement Association is clear and clean cut. It is that of inspiring an unfortunate race with pride and self and with the determination of going ahead in the creation of those ideas that will lift them to the unprejudiced company of races and nations. There is no desire for hate or malice, but every wish to see all mankind linked into common fraternity of progress and achievement that will wipe away the door and the odor of prejudice. The elevate 
and elevate the human race to the height of real godly love and satisfaction.